Welcome to this simple cinematography breakdown part two on my channel. In uh, the last episode, I showed you how easy it is with very little gear to create cinematic sequences. Also, I want to thank you all for the love I received on the last episode. I didn't think it will be this engaging and it's really nice to see what you guys think about the creative process behind it. I really want to thank you for that. Yeah, let's get to the next episode. All right, I hope the focus is here. In this episode, I'll walk you through how I shot this short commercial of four days filming and audio capturing. Let's start with the prep work. I made a 15 pages long shot list in order to visualize the project before we are actually shooting. This shot list acts as a pre-visualization of the final film. This way it's far easier for the client to understand what the idea behind it is and how it will look like. Because we as filmmakers are the creatives behind it and usually the clients are not the creative part of this. Most clients have not a good understanding of what we're trying to achieve and the shot list is the easiest way to show a client how it could look like what we're trying to achieve in this uh, project we are filming. It's also not as easy to get your thoughts out of your mind and then explaining how it should look like. These are to just show a few sample images that you get online on for example shot deck or frame set. The shot list is also a guideline for those who edit the video after. In this case it was me. I had this entire film in mind and I had it on a shot list so I knew exactly which shot comes after which. So I will have everything in the end for the edit. So yeah, let's get into the first scene. first few seconds of this commercial are built up for the audience. In this shot I was fortunate enough that we had a cloudy morning that day. I have used no light for this particular scene, it was pure natural lighting, the sunlight outside. Although this doesn't mean I didn't use any additional gear for it, it's just I didn't use any lights for this scene. One reason behind it was I decided to not use any additional lighting because also of some time saving reasons on set. But here comes the magic. I used my fog machine inside the cabin to create a bit of a mystic look and waited a few seconds to let the fog a bit sit and disappear or otherwise it's just this fake haze as I talked about before in the last episode. And another reason was I didn't have any mist at that morning. So I made it myself. <laughs> What's very important for this shot was how we placed the truck in front of the sunlight or the natural lighting we had. My thoughts were about how to place the truck, in which direction, where is the sun coming from. And for this particular situation, I use an app called Sunseeker. It's a paid app, it's $10, but it's totally worth it. It's saved, you know what I mean, a couple of times. It's, it's essentially an app that shows you in real time or you can use the camera and see where the sun is going to be like a, at a certain time of the day, which makes it far easier to use or to think about how to place the truck and where to place the lighting and, and stuff like that. What did I learn from shooting this? A quick recap. Uh, <laughs> if you use fog machines inside uh, European trucks, I don't know what's happening on an American truck or somewhere else, but on European trucks, yeah, if you use it and you're recording audio, it, it can be a bit challenging because the fog is sometimes a bit too thick and it sets off the alarm or it can set off the alarm. On my occasion it did happen a couple of times, so I had to reshoot this over and over to without this alarm signal which is a bit of a pain sometimes but yeah you, you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> so be aware of that please so let me show you on my ipad how i did that or how i placed the truck in front of the the light because on this scene the light is coming straight from the back from here in the morning don't complain about my drawing <laughs> it's terrible <laughs> and since i had a cloudy morning that day it was perfect lit up it wasn't this harsh light so i got a lot of like um, illuminating all of this area as well and hitting the surface here on the seat which gave me this pleasant look this uh, cinematic look if you're shooting directly into the sunlight it gives this silhouette but sometimes if the light is too harsh you cannot get that look because you just get the silhouette there's no light reflecting or it's super harsh reflecting and you get a lot of shadows and not as much detail in the person's face as you can see here on his face there's some light coming in which gives it a bit of a fill light from the sun over like around here yeah and that's pretty much it for this scene yeah let's move on to the next scene this frame of the truck lights are pretty easy to replicate with this i want you to show sometimes less is more you don't need to over complicate a shot to achieve this all you need to know is at what time of the day are you shooting or filming if you have creative freedom like i had on this shoot you can tell the client or the person who's shooting i want to shoot at this time of the day because the light is then the perfect 
the perfect one or it suits the best for the mood. If you don't have that luxury, then it's a different topic. If you know what time of the day you're filming, then you need to evaluate where is the light coming from at that time of the day, because you need to know how to place your subject into the frame. It's also important to know what you, you're trying to emphasize. What kind of mood do you em emphasize? Do you need a sunny daylight um, scene or do you need a sunrise, sunset scene? And, or do you need a cold scene, which looks very moody and um, not as vibrant. You need to know what you want to emphasize in the end. Also, sometimes there is this occasion where you will run into the real world of filmmaking and that means you will not have the luxury of time. So you have to decide how much time do I have for every shot. Because the worst nightmare of a cinematographer is time. <laughs> if you <laughs> If you plan a, a shot list and uh, your, your like schedule, you need to know how long do I need for this shot. If you get don't get the shot right away, if you're just planning like I have 10 minutes for this shot and it's a complicated shot, then you will run into issues with your schedule. That's what I learned over the years, making enough time to replicate the shot maybe twice or three times. That also gives me the ability to keep my schedule tracked so I don't lose the time and run out of time, which is a pain in the butt if you, <laughs> if you don't have any time and schedule is everything. So be aware of that. Sometimes also the client doesn't have any time to replicate that and you would, I mean, we as filmmakers would like to shoot the whole day and um, that's not the case for the client sometimes. Some have that time, but some don't. And uh, if you have a client that doesn't have any time left, then you need to be efficient and focused on what you do and have enough time to create what you want to create for the client. Because a happy client is way better than a, <laughs> than a not so happy client. <laughs> For this scene, I made this frame in the early morning during winter time, which had also some snow laying around, which helped me out to brighten up the image since we have a dark or a black truck in front of us. If I would have shot this in normal conditions, harsh light, yeah, I would be in trouble because the black absorbs a lot of light and uh, the background is yeah, super bright then and yeah, the early morning was perfect conditions for, for this shot. Maybe you have already noticed in the beginning of this shot, <laughs> I placed some fake fog in there fake mist. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't have uh, any mist that morning, so I had to replicate it myself and I had to use my fog machine in front of the truck lights. What this emphasizes is it's cold outside because you can, if you if it's super cold and you can see your breath, then uh, you know it's it's cold and that's what I wanted to emphasize. It's, it's a cloudy morning, winter time and it's cold. And also the idea behind it was to show the cold environment. The driving school teaches in every condition, in every weather during the whole year. Yeah, since most other competitors in the driving school area uh, shoot their films always in sunny, bright daylight and it looks, yeah, it looks warm and pleasing and um, we wanted to change it up a bit with a bit of a mood, separate us from the rest. That was the goal for this shot. Afterwards, in the edit, we get into sunlight in different um, scenarios. Then we're moving on to the third and last scene I will explain today. If you want to know more about it, um, let me know in the comments section down below. Maybe I will do another series on this. At another day we shot this, as I mentioned before, we had four days of filming and capturing audio. Uh, we shot this at an early morning. Challenge I faced was the, the time of the year and also um, finding a schedule and a date with my client. I had multiple factors to count in, myself, the company I was working with, the client and uh, the conditions outside. <laughs> uh, the biggest challenge was uh, especially the, the early morning, the sunny morning, because uh, as I mentioned before, we shot in the cold in, in this early morning, it was snowing and we didn't want to have the whole film look like a depressed scene. So we had to film in different uh, conditions and scenarios. Sunlight was one of it. <laughs> As you know, in Switzerland, in January, February, December even, uh, we don't have any or not as much of sunlight during the morning. And that was a real challenge because I don't like to have projects sitting around a few months. I like to work on one project, finish it, and then the next project. Sometimes it can happen that I have two or three projects at the same time going on. But um, yeah, I prefer to work on one client, the next client, because most of the time I'm working alone or maybe with two people and not a whole production on like 10 people on set. So I have to organize everything by myself and it's a lot more work than you think. Because in the end, you just see the final image, but you don't see what's, what's happening behind. And then uh, it was a super bummer uh, on that day. We woke up early before the sunrise and uh, thought we will have sun 
because the schedule, the, the weather forecast said we had we were going to have some sun in the morning. Uh, there was no sun, <laughs> so my whole plan was about to to be screwed over. But nevertheless, we did agree on filming that day. We got into to filming, and all of a sudden we saw some light and in the horizon. I said to my client, "Okay, we're driving this direction and uh, try to capture those sun rays." Okay, enough story time for this shot. Let's get into how I actually made these shots happen. The primary source of light was actually the sun. Light. But since we had a like harsh sunlight, as I talked about before, if you have sunlight directly hitting the camera, you need to counterbalance it a bit. Otherwise, you have to make a decision. Do I expose for the background or do I expose for the foreground or the subject? In my case, I wanted to counterbalance it a bit. So I used the, a small LED panel, which you will see in the background. That small LED panel was very necessary to brighten up the image quite a lot to counterbalance it a bit. The way I mounted it was on the passenger side handle of the truck, the cabin. So my my talent, the driver, got illuminated from the side and as well from the background. I got this like beautiful natural lighting and that was it. And what was challenging on this shot? Challenging was the fact that the sunlight has gone so high up like middle of the day at a point where you don't get this beautiful sun rays shooting into the cabin. We had to drive up very high up and hope for it to, to really catch the, the sunrise just hitting my camera sensor. But that wasn't the case, unfortunately. But it's still a cool shot, in my opinion. This is it for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, just shoot it down below or hit me up on Instagram or uh, Twitter. I will share some insights behind the scenes uh, just on Twitter or on X, as we all know. Elon. Yeah. Just have a nice day and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. The biggest challenge was the Sony, Sony morning. <laughs>